Uh, we are back once again. This is the restarted game number four now of Zero Empire's Invitational Semi-Finals between Hallis and Toadie. Um, once again, we've got cows though, so not too much has changed at all here. And up to the north of the map in the blue, we have got Hallis playing as the Mayans. And down to the south in the red, we've got Toadie as the Mayans as well. The map is Valley, and as we were saying in the previous... Um, start of the game. Um, yeah, Valley's been balanced a little bit more now because the players both have a boar each, or two boars each even, and it kind of reduces the requirement to go to the center um, as you kind of, you know, you've got enough food to get going, especially now we've got uh, cows as well. Yeah, I, think, I, I actually recall the uh, first uh, test games on Valley when when the center was still very important, I think it was between Jordan and Viper, and uh, I think they both went like super drush with Japanese, and it yes. was like I don't know ten militia fighting for the deer <laughs> in the center. And even though that was nice to watch, it was like okay, yeah, this should not be the yeah. the whole point of the map. I like mean, that, that is really shift. fun. I agree that that is really fun, and I think seeing that is awesome. But if that's the only viable strategy, then you kind of, well, you kind of just know what's going to happen as soon as you see yeah. the map. It's like, for instance, okay, we see Valley here, we're going to see a Drush in the middle. That's the only, that's the only thing we're going to see. Whereas yeah. now, the, the options are there. You can go for the middle and get the extra food boost. Um, but because you've got enough resources at home, you don't have to. And I think it's really about map control. It's kind of shifted the focus from, right, we have to go to the middle, to, I want map control so I can have the middle. And, yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. That was, like, the biggest problem we had. Like, if you make a new map, uh, it needs to invite for, for new tactics or, or new ideas. Uh, and I think, in the end, we kind of managed to do that. But, well, with Valley, of course, Valley was, was a very difficult map to make, I have to admit. Yeah. Yeah. I like it though. I do like Valley a lot. I, I think it looks, certainly looks interesting, that's for sure. And uh, well, we'll see this time if we have any stealing going on. Um, Hallis taking his forward boar first, which is of course the correct thing to do. Uh, the last thing you want is to take your deer, at the, your boar at the back and then have someone steal it. And we'll see if Toadie decides to steal once again, because it looks like he's going to run straight into the path of Hallis' second boar. In which case, if he does steal, Hallis will not be able to restart because he's already called one and it looks like he might go for it. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. Risk versus reward. Will it pay off? <laughs> he's down to 50% health on that eagle already. And if Tony does manage to pull this one off, it will give him a considerable advantage, that's for sure. It would be nice if you can just steal it back. I mean... Uh, yeah, that's a point, actually. Um, where is... Uh, y no, that's not going to happen. Uh, Toadie's second boar is way too far back, and he's taking it now as well. Um, but... Oh, Hallis in the middle there. Fantastic stuff. Saves his boar. And that was I really, really well played. I really need to refresh the stream. <laughs> I'm really behind. <laughs> yeah, try that. Um, really nice play by Hallis there, actually. He saw the boar running through the fog, and... He managed to get his eagle over there in time to block it and cause the boar to run back. So Hallis will be a little bit delayed on taking that boar, but at least he hasn't lost it. And that was really nicely redeemed by him. And well, we've gone past the five minute mark, so we're not going to see a restart here either, uh, which is all good. Uh, all good. I'm, I'm happy that that happened. <laughs> Uh, at the moment then, both of them sticking up a barracks. It seems like we will see a drush from them both. And a drush from the mines is certainly not uncommon. So it's not like totally like, whoa, what are they doing? Why are they drushing? Um, but we will see them do a drush and we'll kind of get an idea whether they're going to go for the middle very soon as well. Um, I'm trying to think really as the Mayans what benefit the center would really have to them. Uh, obviously that food boost wouldn't be so important as for instance a sieve that would go for a scout rush because the Mayans are pretty much certain to go archers once they get up to the cas uh, feudal age anyway. Well yes but, but I mean food is, is important regardless of, of whatever strategy you do so it, it, it can make a difference. But because they have uh, the cows to start with, 
I don't think it will be that big a difference. And I don't know if there's like a good uh, spot where they can mill. Uh, also the, the shorefish, because there is a few uh, yeah. fish. And if they can combine that, yeah, uh, then it might be worth it. Yeah, if they can do shorefish and deer, then it's definitely a good amount of food that you can get there, especially the shorefish with the villagers gathering it. Um, but it looks like toady has got the advantage in this rush here. Uh, gonna bring his eagle scout over, and while well, Halas's eagle is nowhere to be seen, and Halas is uh, gonna have to go back with those militia there. So it seems like Toadie is winning in the middle for now. Um, and we'll, we'll see if he decides to act on that and, and move out at all. Um, he may decide that it's not worth it and just stick under his TC with the cows in the safety of his town. Uh, but wow, yeah, cleaning up those militia from Halis and Tony takes that one quite comfortably, actually. Now, interestingly enough, both of them are actually walling up quite heavily here, and it's it's a, it's a big wall to do. I mean, do you see? Do you think you see uh, walling quite often on Valley? I I see it as kind of like a really big I thing to go for. I think the map's a little difficult to wall up. That that's definitely the case. Uh, but in team games, it's it's uh, definitely something that needs to be done, uh, and it's actually not that hard because, actually, compared to other maps, uh, once you kind of see the river, you kind of know the layout of the map quite easily. Uh, like, ah, yeah. Know there will be patches of forest. But you you kind of know the position of the players, etc. While on other maps, it can be a little bit more difficult, like water maps, like islands or rivers. Yeah, uh, exactly. It can be yeah. very uh, squiggly, but here it is mm -hmm. like, okay, there's squiggly. one line, you're on one side, I'm on one side, and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's pretty much how it is. Um, I know, I just want to point this out, guys, real quickly. I don't know if you've noticed, but Toadie's left a hole in his wall. Um, right between the tree and the palisade, and if we have a look on Halice's point of view, you can clearly see there's a gap there. I hope he notices that, because otherwise it could end up ca costing him the game again. Um, also worth noting at this stage, Halas has not found his two cows at the back. I think he's probably lost track of how many cows he should have. Uh, but there's two more cows at the back here that he's missing, and that's kind of a really big deal, because that's an extra 300 food for free that yeah, he could be Yeah, that's essentially taking. a boar. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, a boar with uh, 340 food, and cows with 300. That is a huge deal. And uh, Halis now seeding a lot of farms here, and uh, it looks like looks like we may see just a fast castle from him in the end. In fact, it looks like a fast castle from Toady as well. Interesting stuff. I have the impression you're eating something. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I try not to eat while I'm casting, but I have to yeah. eat at some point, otherwise I'll just sit in my chair and die eventually. Just from yeah. like not not stopping talking. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um Hallis is up. Blacksmith archery range. And um Well, Toadie's a little bit slower at this stage. Thirty one pop for Hallis, thirty two for Toady though, but he does have more military. So that just means that Toadie has less villagers at the moment and he will be going to the castle age in a slower time and with a smaller economy. But interestingly enough, I'm not really sure what Toadie's plan is here. He's actually taking four villagers on stone already. And perhaps he's going to try and do a castle drop once he gets to the castle age. Ooh. And go for those uh, those lovely plumed archers. That could actually be quite a good idea. I mean, the, the game is quite slow. They're both walled up, uh, more or less at least. Um, yeah, going for a fast castle might just be what's needed because, I mean, first of all, you will be able to protect your economy for a fair bit with a castle. Uh, Mayans will have a tough time getting a castle down in Castle Age. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it is actually a, quite a good thing to do. Yeah, I think so as well. And, um, you know, it's almost turning into a kind of, you know, if you ever watch Regicide Fortress Mayan War, both players just go straight to the castle age and then start making some plumed archers. It's going to be pretty much that if Toady does that. Um, which is, as we know, a really powerful and strong strategy. I just want to point out something here, though. Hallis sent his scout through the hole in Toady's wall, and Toady <laughs> just said thank you and went, uh, went and walled it up with two villagers. <laughs> so at least this time he is fully closed. He knows that he is safe and sound here. 
Um, paying attention, I like that. <laughs> yes, finally paying attention at long last. And <laughs> Hallis losing his villager there as well. Uh, also, Toad, not villager, scout even. <laughs> um, also, Toadie's being a pain here, um, just keeping Hallis annoyed by battering away at his walls with these two militia. They will probably die to these archers fairly quickly, uh, but that's not a problem at all. Obviously, Toadie now knows that Hallis will be going for archers and crossbows and not for eagle warriors, but, I mean, could we really expect to see eagle warriors anyway? Uh, I don't really think so. Uh, Castle Age for Hallis is about done actually, 97%, he's practically there, and Toadie is on 70%, so uh, a little bit further behind, but he will afford that castle as soon as he gets up. Question is, will Hallis make his uh, timing advantage count? And it might be difficult against those walls. Yeah, that, that's the big thing. He, he has the walls, okay, Toadie's walls, we kind of know the reputation of that, so uh -huh. we yet have to see how it kind of turns out. And also, I, I, I must see, just looking at the minimap, uh, Hellas's walls look so much more efficient. Oh, they are. They Tony really are. looks like he's, he's all over the place with <laughs> walls. It's super hard to defend that. Okay, he has, of course, um, well, if, if uh, Hellas is attacking on one side, he can kind of pull up a second layer uh, yeah. behind it. Well, yeah, he can. Uh, the thing is, though, Tony just lost his villager that was building up that wall behind it, oh. <laughs> and uh, now this palisade is in jeopardy. Um, it looks like Tony has drawn a massive M on the map. <laughs> it's just yeah. a huge M um, on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, yeah, like you say, very, very sort of inefficient walls. But that's the thing. Uh, on this map, it is so difficult to wall because it's just so open. Yet they've both insisted on doing it, spending all that villager time and all that resource on, on doing that. And it looks like his way in now. Uh, there's no way that Toadie's going to wall behind this easily because Hallis will just kill any villagers that attempt that. And instead, he's walling in... Once again, giving up a load of map um, to Hallis, and obviously that's bad for Toady. It means he's on the back foot, and defending is never that pleasant <laughs> in Age of Empires, unless you have unlimited mangonels. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there's the castle up. Off now. I am just curious, where is he going to put down the castle? He's put it up at the north of his town centre, and oh. I don't know why he's put it there, because obviously the attack from Hallas was coming on the left side, which means that, well, this uh, wood has been disrupted, his farms have been disrupted as well, and, uh, well, he's going for plumed archers now as well, so obviously, you know, he will be able to uh, defend this soon, but it takes a little while to get those units out, and with Toadie's economy being this disrupted as well, he's really low on resources actually. He's got no food at all to really keep villager production going. He needs more farms. So yeah, it's moving yeah. his whole economy once again. Oh yeah, that's a big move to make. I mean, not only did he spend all of this time and all of these resources building these walls, but the second they're breached, he's had to build another set of walls, and then he's retreated behind that as well, and it's messed up his economy massively. Hallis at this stage has a huge, huge advantage, and Toady at the moment making these plumed archers now, um, which is all well and good. I mean, the plumed archers are a fantastic unit um, against crossbow as well. They will do, they will perform very strong. But the problem is, uh, they're going to take a lot longer to mass plumed archers from a castle than it will to make crossbows from three or, or two or three um, archery ranges. True, but once he gets to that, that critical mass, mm. I think, yes, it, he will definitely have the advantage. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's the problem, getting to the critical mass, though. That's the, the time now that Hallis has got to push an advantage, almost. Interesting question in the chat. Do plumes take longer to pop out in FE? I'm going to check in the data files. and. Bear with me. <laughs> I think check. they're about the same, actually. Um, by the looks of it, I'm just like trying trying to gauge it by uh, by looking at how long they take to make. Um, I think it's difficult to gauge at one or two seconds. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's like it it looks pretty similar, but. Hey, you can confirm that for us anyway. Uh, so yeah, like I say, Toadie with a huge problem now. No food income at all. Both of his, well, he has got food income, just not enough. Both of his TCs are idle. And of course, making these plumed archers is costing him, um, you know, quite a bit here. And it's, 
he has to make them. He doesn't really have a choice. If he just defends and defends and defends, then Hallis will gain an advantage eventually. Uh, well, he already has, but he'll gain more of an advantage. Um, so Tony kind of has to get get the plumed archers out here, but at the same time, he cannot neglect his economy. And like I said before, he needed more farms. He's got them up now, um, but yeah, his villager production is suffering from it. Hallis going to work I... his way through. Sorry? <laughs> uh, I said Hallis is going to work his way through. Uh, what about the production times then? Uh, they are exactly the same. Yeah. I was thinking it, it was like one second different, but they are exactly the same. 16 seconds. Yeah, so 16 it seconds, yeah. Fast. It's not bad. I mean, compare that to a uh, crossbow. Um, that's slightly faster, isn't it? Oh yeah, crossbows yeah. go a lot slower. Yeah, so... We'll check. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you know, you will be able to... Um, get those plumed archers out quite quickly but still having the two archery ranges making archers from the feudal age does mean you'll have an army advantage very quickly and oh no Tony running straight into the castle of Hallis there losing three plumed archers very quickly and uh, well it looks like looks like Hallis is gonna head him off as well with his uh, crossbows here very nicely played and Tony's um, Plumed archers just don't have a foot to stand on. Wow, getting absolutely massacred here. Really, really unlucky for Toady. Well, not even unlucky. It was just well played by Hallis, really, there, as he gains a 600 score lead now. And I, I don't think Toady's got a whole lot more to give at the moment. He is really struggling. So yeah, the crossbow creation time is uh, it's like 30 seconds, uh, isn't it? 27 seconds. So yeah, 27. definitely a big difference. But of course, yeah. Yeah, so three it, archery it, rangers against one castle, it 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 evens out in the end. It does, yeah, and of course now Hallis also has a castle of his own. He's also making plumed archers as well, and behind this, his economy is sitting on three town centers, which is fantastic compared to the two town centers of Toady. It's looking like uh, Hallis is starting to get every advantage at the moment um, as he continues to pump out these units and well retains map control for the time being. Yeah, it, it kind of seems like whatever Toadie is trying or attempting to do now, uh, Hallis is just that one step ahead. Yeah. Or... One thing I just noticed though, Hallis only just got Wheelbarrow, so that was quite a big mistake from him. At 20, 29 minutes almost, getting Wheelbarrow quite late there. That's late, that's late. That but still, late. I mean, I'm, I, I can't see the score. Uh, the, the resolution is a little bit too, too bad for me, but... Okay. I, I do have the impression that Hallis still has the advantage. Oh yeah, I mean he's got about 800 score lead at the Ooh. moment, which is kind of yeah. huge for this stage in the game. And uh, well, Toadie's still trying to wall up with stone walls, and I, I always feel like the person walling up with stone walls is the person to, you know, have the disadvantage in most situations. I mean, in almost every game we've seen in this tournament, the person to sit behind their stone walls all game has been the person to lose. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be that way every time. It's just that if you're playing a reactive game, if you're always reacting to what your opponent's doing, and your reaction is to build walls, then that's a huge disadvantage. If you're playing kind of th like thinking ahead, and if you're, yeah. you're the one making your opponent react to you, then if you're building the walls just to defend back at home, then that's not actually bad. It's just these reactive walls, which are usually a bad, bad sign. Exactly, exactly. It, uh, it, it's it actually one of the big things in Age of Empires, like uh, make the opponent play your game, and exactly. then you will win in the end. And this is exactly what uh, uh, Hellas is, is doing. He's really forcing his game on uh, Toby. Oh, he is, definitely. Um, but I've got to say, that was a nice fight for Tony there. Didn't lose a single unit and flattened every single one of those crossbows with that mangonel. Certainly caught uh, Hallis off guard. I mean, Hallis still has the map control. He still has the greater number of plumed archers at this moment. And also, they are even on upgrades, I believe. But... Uh, obviously, Hallis does have a much larger economy at this stage, and he's on his way up to the Imperial Age, which can get a little bit dicey for Toadie now. Now, I should be able to spot Hallis's stone here, and he should be taking, yeah, he should still be taking stone. He's putting up his second castle as well, and I mean, this is pretty typical Mayan play, really. Um, one question for you, though, Sijin. How would you say the Mayans have really been changed in the Forgotten, uh, compared to what they'd normally play, be played like in AOC? 
Ooh, that's a difficult one. Um, they did not change a whole lot. Uh, I think I, I have to take the change lock with me. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. Because I, I'm going to say, I mean, I don't really feel like there's been a huge change at all. Obviously, the mines will get that second unique technology, which is what every civilization now gets as well. Yes. But, um, I mean, what is that again? Let's just check that. Uh, unique and arrows. Um, ah, the reason okay. why it is such a weird tech is actually it was inspired by... Uh, Age of Mythology, you might know, uh, I don't know how much you play Age of Mythology, but they have the Greek uh, unique unit for Hades, which is the Gastrapetes, or however you say it in a proper <laughs> British accent. Uh, right. So, and, and they tear down buildings so fast, and it's really fun to play with them. And I was like, okay, I kind of want to do that in Age of Empires as well. Okay. But it was kind of difficult to squeeze it in and I was like yeah how can we give it to Mayans yeah we can it might be an opportunity for people to pick arbalests over plumed archers but it, it, it really yeah. is not the incentive because I mean you don't build archers for buildings you no build exactly siege for buildings and yes. they have siege rams as well so exactly. I I think it's an interesting one um, because a lot of the Cha well, the, the changes to the Mayans here are really minimal, like you say, not a lot has changed yeah. in gameplay-wise. One, just... one big thing I want to say before you go on the, the, right. the Mayans is that their uh, plumed archers are more expensive, but that's yes. it. Uh, obviously, the, the plumed archers are really strong, and you know, most games you see uh, with the Mayans, they will be making plumed archers at some point, you can, you can almost guarantee it. Um, but yeah, I mean, not a whole lot has changed fundamentally about them. Their build orders are going to remain pretty much the same. Um, their play style will remain the same. And that tech is one of the... Well, an interesting one to me, anyway, because I feel like it's one of the techs that really doesn't affect a whole lot. It's very, very specific to a certain situation. Yeah. But it just adds another another possibility there. And oh wow, nice play by Hallis. Uh, Tony just not paying attention to his army there. Losing two mangonels to this mass of plumed archers. And it was really nothing that uh, nothing that Tony could have done with those mangonels aside from actually notice that army to, uh, to stop that from happening there. As he retreats back to base and mm. the safety of his walls. Now this is where the problem is going to start to arise for Tony because Hallis is already Imperial. He's got trebuchets on the way out, I believe. Yes, uh, trebuchet on the way across the map now. And Toadie will just find himself losing these castles very quickly. Um, and until he can kind of counter this, and it's difficult to counter this, uh, until you get to the Imperial Age yourself. He's just clicked up. Yeah, e even in cars, I mean, even in Imperial Age, uh, I think Mayans are a bit of a difficult sif in Mayan Wars. Uh, because, well, their plumed archers have uh, a bonus against elite eagle warriors. So it's like, yeah. in the Mayan war, you can only really make one unit uh, combined with rams, uh, with siege, of course, but it's, yeah, plumed archers. <laughs> yeah, Just, I mean, you know. I've, I've seen a few situations where the Mayan player has made eagles, but they've used them to raid rather than to actually fight the plumed archers, and they've made plumed archers as well. I think eagles are a fantastic supplement to the army, uh, if you can afford them. And in actual fact, Hallis can afford them. If he gets a few more farms out, he could start some eagle warrior production as well here. And that would just really pin the nail in the coffin for Toadie. I mean, it, it's, that would just be really difficult to deal with. Um, but like I say, well, like you say even, uh, with the eagle uh, plumes having a bonus against eagles it kind of reduces their well the likelihood of seeing them at all um and i mean any mast archer is good if you can get them into a corner and have your opponent have very small surface area on you so these uh, Treb's doing a ton of damage here. This castle uh, getting whittled away. Uh, obviously, Toady pulling a lot of villagers to repair that. And that's really impacting his wood income. It may be impacting his gold income as well, as he's pulled so many villagers to do it. And uh, it looks like Hallis will be taking a huge advantage now. There is no question about it. I mean, he's on 164 population. Toady's on 124. Ooh. And there's quite a big difference, yeah. It doesn't look like Toadie has anyone near the military as well. I mean, well, actually, no, he might have. It's kind of split up. 
kind of split up. If he brings them together, it might look a little bit more formidable, but you cannot deny that Halas has the... Um, he has a clear advantage, I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, there's great no advantage doubt about as that. Well. I think we're just waiting for the inevitable uh, GG from Dogi. Yeah, well, the Elite Plume Archer upgrade coming in for Halas now. And, you know, you've got to say to yourself, what could Toady do in this position to <laughs> potentially come back? Um, the only thing he could do, really, is take a risk and go for, I don't know, Onager or something. And, oh, he is actually going for Onager. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, he's taking the risk. He's playing the risky game. Um, if he goes for Onager and manages to flatten a load of these plumes, he might be able to pull through with his own. But it is extremely risky. Onager is expensive. And, yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Um, plumed archers, they're going to kill these units very quickly. And, wow. Onager reset. Did you see that? Watch the stream very carefully. The Manganel died. And then the Onager upgrade got done. Uh, oh. Got researched. And the Onager sort of came back to life and then died again. <laughs> that was really weird. That was really, really weird. Brilliant. Uh, but yeah, this mass now is going to be really difficult to deal with. Elite plumed archers from Halas. Normal plumed archers for Toadie. And uh, Toadie's going to get some mangonel shots off, but it's not enough. He's sending those plumed archers forwards. And I just think Halas is going to absolutely wreck this army now as Toadie loses his castle. And Halas will just walk on through. Toadie says GG. Halas will take the game. And he will take the series. The semi finals will be won by him. And uh, he will go through to the finals now. Fantastic play. Um, like I say, I mean, Hallis just had the edge that entire game, really. Um, his economy was much better. And like we said as well, Toadie's walls, Toadie's kind of reactive play cost him a lot that game. Exactly, exactly. He, he was just always in the lead and just telling him what to do, pretty much. You could see <laughs> he was always trailing behind. Yeah. yeah. So there oh, we go. Good experience for him, I think. Definitely oh, definitely. Lot, uh, from from playing this tournament, I think. First oh, of for all, sure. uh, check your walls. <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> uh, yeah, forcing your game uh, on the other yeah. player. Uh, but I've got to say though, Toadie's done really well to get this far. He was the sixth seed, and he got to the semi-finals after beating the third seed of the tournament. So he's played really well. I mean, he even took some games from Halis here. Um, well, he took a game from Halas, uh, yeah, which was <laughs> really good. I think Toadie Toady has a lot of potential as a player. And uh, I think he, he should feel very, very proud of himself to get this far in the tournament and do so, so well. Um, you know, he's definitely got some ways to come. But at the same time, he's definitely, uh, definitely got uh, the potential there. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, Halas will indeed advance through to the finals. Thanks for Sijin for joining me in these last couple of games as well. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, yeah, we're going to head off. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. See ya.